Hello and welcome to Perspectives. I'm your host, Dr. Rondrick Williamson. Wow, I'm glad you joined me on today because this show is going to be phenomenal. If you have a history of hypertension, diabetes, uh, weight loss issues, this is the show for you. We're going to talk to Dr. Brian Scott from Scott's Health Mart about health and wellness. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Perspectives. We're talking with Dr. Brian Scott on today. We want to welcome him to the show. Thank, Thank you, you for coming by. No problem. Thank you. We're talking you. about health and wellness on today. Mm -hmm. But before we get into talking about uh, health and wellness, tell us a little bit about your history, where you went to school, um, your pharmacist, and just let us know a little bit about All yourself. Right. Um, well, actually, I'm a, ma a native of Macon, Georgia. Okay. Graduated from Central High School. Uh, and after that, I went to Howard University, mm -hmm. graduated uh, with my Doctor of Pharmacy degree um, in 2003 from Howard University School of Pharmacy. Okay. So you're doing pharmacy now, but you are also transitioning into a health and wellness piece. Explain that for us. Uh, we've always been a full service pharmacy, doing everything from your standard prescriptions. We also do compounding. But about three and a half years ago, we really started seeing, noticing how people would come in and just weren't feeling good. Mm -hmm. You know, you say, hey, you know, hey, Mr. Jones, how's your blood pressure? Oh, it's fine, but doc, I'm tired, or, right. you know, I'm not this, or, you know, I, my nature isn't ready, whatever right, different right. things. So we really started coming up with looking at different vitamins and minerals and um, helping people feel better. Mm -hmm. And I had an interesting, one of my good friends uh, was uh, afflicted with Crohn's disease. Mm -hmm. And he kept asking me about natural alternatives to help him out with his Crohn's disease. Mm -hmm. And so finally I started doing some research and found out that there's a lot of good evidence-based nutritional information mm -hmm. about good quality supplements. Right. And when we got into that, that's how One Wellness Place was born. Right, so that's what we really want to talk about. But before we go mm -hmm. to that, I want to uh, piggyback on something you mentioned earlier. You said something about compounding. Mm -hmm. uh, what is compounding? Uh, compounding is when we customize medications to people's specific needs. Mm -hmm. um, everybody is different. Um, some people are allergic to the certain dyes that are in the pills. Some mm -hmm. people are allergic to the uh, what we call the inert ingredients, not actually the medicine, but the different cornstarch or the lactose mm -hmm. that they use to keep the pill together. Right. Um, some people can't swallow, maybe if you're an elderly person or you know, you're know you a hospice patient. So we can get the bulk powder, the bulk chemicals of these different medications. Uh, we can change the dosage form. We can put things into creams that you can mm -hmm right here on your skin. Uh, we can make uh, things that were that were discontinued by the manufacturer, mm -hmm. and then we can customize hormones specifically for people. So compounding really allows us to customize medications to your individual needs. Now, how popular is compounding? I know I've just recently heard of compounding. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's probably not just included at your pharmacy, but is right. it becoming something that is widespread? Um, more and more physicians are, are, are learning and, uh, and other practitioners are no, learning about compounding mm -hmm. because oftentimes the standard medication just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And so when the standard medication doesn't work, that's when they come to us. Right. Uh, I would like to say that we're very proud. Um, Scott Health Mart just got our, our, our PCAP accreditation. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a, a board that accredits, that accredits uh, pharmacies across the country. Right. Um, it's only three in the state of Georgia and we're the only one in middle Georgia that has this accreditation for our oh, compounding wow. pharmacy. Wow. So we just got that about three months ago and we're real proud of that. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Now, in this day and age with uh, health insurance issues and Medicare, Medicaid, um, is compounding actually covered um, like your conventional medication on the prescription plans? Um, some prescription plans do cover it. Um, one of the big ones here, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, federal employees mm -hmm. covers it. Um, but the, one of the other big ones, United Healthcare, doesn't cover compounding. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd like to tell just a quick story. My uncle, who's mm -hmm. in Alabama, uh, literally had hair falling out of his head. Mm -hmm. And he called me, he's like, you know, uh, my doctor told me about this compound that could keep these patches of hair falling out, mm -hmm. but the, the pharmacist wants $50, but it's not covered on my insurance, so I don't want it. Right. So I was like, you'd rather your hair fall out 
than pay the $50. Pay the $50. Right. And this is a man who has $50 right, to right, pay. Right. Um, and so when I put it to him like that, you know, he was like, you know what? You're right. Mm -hmm. And I, after, oftentimes what I tell people is the insurance companies do not have your best interest at heart. Right. So just because it's not covered on your insurance mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily you don't need it or it won't help you feel better. Right. So it probably is right now in the state and where we are about 50-50. Mm -hmm. But we do try to make the compounds very reasonable. Um, typically our average compound is about $45. Mm -hmm which is about the cost of a brand name prescription mm -hmm. if you had prescription coverage. Well, let me ask this question. Um, again, in this market, in this mm -hmm. day and age, how has the new prescription plans that are out there now affected um, patients getting medication? Has there been a rise in those coming to the pharmacy getting medication, or do you see any difference at all? Uh, definitely. Um, maybe about five years ago, Medicare, for the first time, started offering prescription coverage, and mm -hmm. this is what was called the Medicare Part D plan, mm -hmm. uh, D meaning drugs or prescription drugs. Right. Um, that was never done before. So with that, we saw a huge increase in people, those seniors who are over the age of 65, who now could get prescription coverage that couldn't get it before. Mm -hmm. So we have seen a rise in prescription drugs being written and filled and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that has come about, and that's a good thing. Um, and because we are into vitamins and minerals, some mm -hmm. people think I'm against prescription right. medication, which I'm not. Right. A lot of people do need prescription medication, so we have seen a rise. But I am kind of concerned that now people are putting too much on the prescription medications mm -hmm. and not looking at natural alternatives to help manage a lot of these conditions. Right, and we want to talk about natural alternatives also later in the program, but another question I have, being a physician myself, mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's frustrating when scripts are written, written for patients and they can't or get the script or the, the script is not covered on their plan. Mm -hmm. Then we're forced to do some type of pre-authorization in order to get it covered. Right. Do you see that a lot on your end? Um, there are certain medications that we write for that the patient just can't get. Oh, definitely. Um, right now, the, the insurance companies really do have a stranglehold mm -hmm. on the healthcare system. A lot of times people come in and they're shocked when their, you know, Plavix for their blood thinner is, mm -hmm. you know, $180. They think right. I made $180. Right. I made $8. Right. <laughs> you know, the insurance company made, made the most of the money. Right. $172 um, and that's that's something that goes on a lot of meditations do need prior approvals mm -hmm. um, sometimes when the new medication comes out it is a me too drug mm -hmm. and it's the same drug as some of the older medications right. and so that sometimes a, a prior approval is good because it does kind of help keep down mm -hmm. costs but more often than not it is something going on in the background, mm -hmm. meaning this insurance company has a has a contract with this pharmaceutical right. company, and if you use another drug, they don't want to pay for it. Right. And right now, that's just the nature of the beast that we live right. in, and it's not really anything we as little we can call our congressmen and complain. Right. That's about right. it when it comes to the insurance. But company. you know the um, the human side. You know, we tend to th we need to think about these. Um, these issues that the patients have. Some patients don't have adequate transportation to go to the pharmacy to mm -hmm. get a particular medication. Then we send the patient to the pharmacy and they find out, oh, it's not covered. Mm -hmm. When they've just struggled to find a transportation to get there to get that medication. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you see patients frustrated once they come to, and right. they may show some aggression towards right. you, right. <laughs> thinking it's your your fault that they can't get that medication. Have mm -hmm. you seen that a lot? Uh, we have, we have, um, and we have such a good relationship with a lot of uh, the different physicians and practitioners mm -hmm. in the area. So a lot of times a doctor will call me and say, hey, is this covered on Medicaid? Or mm -hmm. I'm about to write this for my patient. You know, is it covered? Um, and some, we have certain, certain good relationships with some people. They'll call and say, look, I know this isn't one of your patients. Right. But they have this, do you think it's on the formulary? Right. And I'll go in there and I'll try to see what I can do and what I can find out. Um, we also take it a step further before we just call you and say, hey, this isn't covered. Right. Most times we try to call the insurance company and say, hey, doc, you know, uh, this one isn't covered, but this is one that is covered. So mm -hmm. either you can call the insurance company to get the prior approval or you can maybe switch it to this and save yourself some time. Right. So we try to do all of that while the patient is in the store to try mm -hmm. to get taken care of as quickly as possible. And we do offer free delivery, so if they did make it, make it there and they got to go back home, mm -hmm. they don't have to come back out. You know, we can send it out to them. Right. How important um, is it for patients to be familiar with the types of medications that they take? I see a number of patients um, who I classify as on polypharmacy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we write for medications that may have a specific contraindication um, and that the patient shouldn't have that medication. A lot of times patients come to the office, they don't even know what their medications are. Right. And the burden is on us as physicians to call the pharmacy to find out. So um, for viewers that are watching on today, um, those with multiple um, health conditions, how important is it for the patient 
to be active in their own medical care and know what medications they're taking. Um, it's extremely important. I suggest everybody, you know, sit down and write out or type out, you know, the name of your medication, the strength and how you're exactly taking mm -hmm. it. Um, because this is important because, and then try not to go to multiple different doctors and mm -hmm. multiple different pharmacies. Mm -hmm. Have one podiatrist, one cardiologist, right. one internist, um, because what happens is when you go to different doctors, doctors are often, especially if you don't take your list of medications, mm -hmm. they're actually writing the duplicates or one right. person writes lisinopril 20, the next person writes lisinopril 40, mm -hmm. you're going to different pharmacies, get them and next thing you know, you're taking double the medication right, that you right. really shouldn't be taking. Um, by going to one pharmacy, they do, oftentimes we catch a lot of these right. duplicates and we can stop that, but the onus is on the, the, the individual patient at, right. at first. If you go in there, you can write them all down, and we have, you know, elderly people, they got it in their little pouch, right, and right. one lady kept it in a bra, right. you know, <laughs> but she would pull it out and she would have everything down there, and if the doctor took her off, she would scratch through it, right. and that, you know, that way she, she knew exactly what she was taking and what right. she needed. So those, those are the patients that I love to see. When right. They're, they're <laughs> well informed about their own medical care. When they're actually participating in their own medical exactly, care. Exactly, exactly. We're going to park right here for just a second. We'll be right back. Are you overwhelmed with vitamins? Do you have so many supplements that you have actually forgotten why you take some of them? Are you not getting the results you want from your new supplement program? Hi, at Scott's Pharmacy, we are extensively trained in vitamins, minerals, and herbal products. We are also experts at medications, various disease states, and drug nutrient interactions. So no matter what your issues, blood pressure, diabetes, to hair loss, we can help. Stop by Scott's Pharmacy for a consultation and start looking better, feeling better, and being better. Now, you've embarked on a new dimension mm -hmm. of um, your specialty, and that's health and wellness. And your motto, I believe, is look better, feel better, be better. Exactly. Expound on that for me. Um, One Wellness Place is our new line of nutritional supplements. Um, it's very important that people realize it's not a multi-level marketing thing. Mm -hmm. uh, every product is researched and developed by myself and my father. Mm -hmm. uh, the motto of One Wellness Place is look better, feel better, be better. Mm -hmm. uh, we feel that we have nutritional supplements and counseling to help you do just that, to help you lose weight, mm -hmm. to look better, to help you feel better, whether it's, you know, increase your energy, help you sleep better, have better sex, increase a, a decrease. Now, Wait a minute, Dr. Scott. Now, you <laughs> said a mouthful right there. Hold on. Let's address one of those issues. You mm -hmm. said um, look better, mm -hmm. sleep better, right. have better sex, right. and a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. So what, what, things that, what things will set you apart mm -hmm. um, and the products that you um, provide than something we can go buy over the counter, say, a sleep aid? Okay. Um, well, what we do is get to the root of why you're not sleeping. Mm -hmm. um, Bened you do not have a lack of Benadryl right. in your system. That is not why you're not sleeping, because your body is deficient in Benadryl. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's stress. Maybe it's lack of hormones like progesterone. Mm -hmm. um, so what we do is get to the root of why people aren't sleeping. Mm -hmm. And just real quickly about stress. Um, your stress hormone is cortisol. Mm -hmm. And when this is high, studies have shown that that leads to insomnia. Right. What we, we do is give you uh, nutritional supplements that help reduce that nighttime cortisol okay and so that you're able to drift off and go to sleep naturally you won't wake up groggy the mm -hmm. next morning like with Benadryl you mm -hmm. won't be addicted to it like with Ambien or mm -hmm. some of the other sleep aids so our nutritional supplements are really designed to get to the root of the problem what's going on so melatonin wouldn't mm -hmm. be a good supplement and, and viewers I know melatonin is an over-the-counter product that you can get at any your any everyday pharmacy but is that something? Melatonin is actually a pretty good product. Mm -hmm. It's a hormone in our brain that's a, uh, attached to our, our, our rhythm of going to sleep. Um, mm -hmm. I use melatonin in our counseling sessions sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, however, it really goes to the root of why you're not sleeping. If you're a person who tells me, well, I just have a hard time going to sleep, I don't know why, but once I get to sleep, I'm fine. Melatonin also works great for people who work swing shifts. Mm -hmm. If you're a fireman and you work two days on and three days off, if you're a nurse and you, know, you work in night shifts, sometimes mm -hmm. and you know melatonin works great there um, we have our one wellness place sleep pack which mm -hmm. is designed for people whose mind is racing all night if you lay down and you think about you know what you didn't get done the day before what you need to get done tomorrow and you can't go to sleep or you wake up mm -hmm. and you're like oh I, I needed I needed that pack yesterday <laughs> exactly the one wellness place sleep pack really gets to the root of mm -hmm. that because your issue is not necessarily your carcanean rhythm being off mm -hmm. your issue is the stress and that cortisol being high at nighttime okay. so that's what you get when you come to us is literally getting to the root of mm -hmm. what's going on now are there also other are those other things like um 
turning off the lights, mm -hmm. um, um, things like your cell phone light, the light on the front of your VCR. Mm -hmm. I hear that those things can hinder sleeping as well. So are those things that you need to adhere to in addition to taking? Oh, definitely. When we do our sleep counseling sessions, we do a total about sleep health. Mm -hmm. um, some people we've talked to about re literally removing the TV from the bedroom. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to sleep listening to the news about all the crime and everything mm -hmm. that's going on, if you're a worrier, you're going to be thinking about somebody coming right. through your house. Um, other people, they talk to, well, I just got to get up every morning around 3 o'clock in the morning and use the bathroom. Mm -hmm. You talk to them about their eating habits. Oh, well, I drink a Coca-Cola cola before I go to bed. That I was might just going to ask you, about that. You know, so it's different things like that. And when we look at total sleep wellness, certain things like cutting out the lights, maybe cutting out the light on your VCR, maybe, it, you know, everybody right. else is different. Right. Um, but we do get into a whole host of things. Uh, also, what time people take their medications. Mm -hmm. um, we had one lady, she was taking a stimulant right before bed and couldn't oh, quite wow. realize why she wasn't going to sleep. Right. One lady drank Mountain Dew with her bedtime mm -hmm. meal couldn't quite realize why she goes to sleep. So we look at all of those things and see if there's anything that we can correct, you know, besides right. the nutritional right. supplement. You know, being totally transparent, I've tried a few things over the counter to try to help me to sleep better. Mm -hmm. And I find that when I awake in the morning, I'm still groggy or feel like I don't want to get out of bed. Mm -hmm. And that's not a good feeling. So that feeling is not one that we get with your product. Am I agree? The One Wellness Play Sleep Pack has two things. One is phosphatidylserine, mm -hmm. which um, really helps reduce that nighttime cortisol. Mm -hmm. um, people who've taken phosphatidylserine report being less stressed. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing is L-theanine. And L-theanine is an amino acid that's found in green tea. Mm -hmm. um, it's shown to pr promote calm or relaxation without drowsiness. Mm -hmm. So when I talk to people about it, I'm saying this is not a sleeping pill. You're right. not going to take it and feel like you have to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. But what you will find is that you're a lot more relaxed and you find it easier to drift off to sleep. Mm -hmm. The people that take it, um, either they fall asleep quicker or they'll say, man, I used to wake up three and four times a night. I slept the entire night. I just had a lady uh, talk to me about this today. She has a special needs son. Her mm -hmm. life is stressed. Mm -hmm. She was like, Brian, I've been taking a sleep pack. I sleep throughout the night and I wake up refreshed. Mm -hmm. So much different than the Tylenol PM that she was right. taking, so much different than the Ambien that some people take, mm -hmm. because that's not getting to the root, that's just masking the symptoms. Right. I can give you anything to knock you out, right. of course. but to have you wake up refreshed in the morning to be able to do these shows is what we need. Right, and some of those things may be um, addictive. I mm -hmm. mean, you start taking those things on a regular basis, then you're looking for it. Mm -hmm. on every day and that's not a good thing as well. Right, um, some of your prescription products um, mm -hmm. like your Ambien's, your Sonata's um, and then of course some of your benzodiazepines, some people may take Ativan or Xanax to go mm -hmm. to sleep. All of these things can have a, a, an addictive property mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. So one thing that's big nowadays is, is dieting. Okay. Now there's so mm -hmm. many different diets out there. There's so mm -hmm. many people trying the uh, what is it, the cabbage soup diet, right, right, the right, right. Atkins diet. Right, right. What's your take on dieting? Is there some tips that you would give to someone who says, I need to lose 10 pounds and I need to lose 10 pounds fast? Right. Um, well, if you need to lose 10 pounds fast, you at least got, got a, <laughs> a, a, a class reunion next week, right. you know, starving yourself may work. Right, right. <laughs> um, but in reality, we talk about lifestyle changes. Mm -hmm. Most people can't keep stick to diets because they are so restrictive. Mm -hmm. But if you look at each one of these different diets, the cabbage diet, the Atkins diet, South Beach diet, mm -hmm. one of the things that they all have in common is cutting your carbohydrates. Right. And I really do believe that is the issue. One of the greatest uh, tricks that the food industry in the United States has done is done this low fat type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and typically things that are low fat are packed with, car are packed with sugars. Mm -hmm. And sugar is what's caused us to lose weight. Right. And real quickly, um, sugar, when you don't, that's the main uh, fuel source for your muscles. Mm -hmm. But if you're not working out, it turns to fat. Right. You know, Michael Jordan would eat a pound, a, a plate full of pasta before each basketball game mm -hmm. because it's instant, it's instant uh, fuel. Right. Well, some of us eat a, a, a plate full of pasta and yeah, go to then, bed. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then if, we see the result yeah. later. Right. So that would be the first thing that we look at is um, uh, reducing your carbohydrate mm -hmm. intake. And a lot of people will find, I, this guy came into the store, he literally lost 25 pounds mm -hmm. over two months just by cutting bread out. Oh, wow. Now he ate a loaf of bread a day. Right. 
Oh, but wow. literally, you know, that much bread. So any, you know, subtle changes can change. And then when you come to us about uh, weight loss and talk to us, we show you why it's not just that, but lack of sleep will keep you from working mm -hmm. out. Lack of water will keep you, I mean, lack of sleep will keep you from losing weight. Lack of water will keep you from losing weight. Mm -hmm. um, so many different other things that sometimes we don't think about. Dysbiosis, too much bad bacteria right. will keep you from losing right. weight. So it's not always just calories in, calories right. out. Now, how important is um, adequate fruits and vegetables on a daily basis? Um, some fruits are high in, in sugar. Mm -hmm. So is that a problem? I know it's recommended that we have a certain amount of fruits and vegetables each mm -hmm. day. Right. But is that hurting us or is it actually helping us? Um, for the mass, vast majority of people, they would do better eating fruits mm -hmm. than eating some of the other things that we do. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, grapes are very high in sugar, mm -hmm. you know. And if you are a bodybuilder and you're like, look, I need to get down to the last, in, you know, percent fat I can for this competition, mm -hmm. they typically cut out fruits as well. Right. The majority of us would do better to eat fruits because it has so many antioxidants and vitamins in it mm -hmm. compared to the candy bar, right. <laughs> you know, which has no vitamins and minerals and no nutritional value. Right. So for the average person who's just trying to lose five or 10 pounds, yes, eat, you know, replacing certain fruits with the junk food will do you better. Mm -hmm. But you will find it hard to eat, lose weight if you're eating, you know what I'm saying, two bags of grapes every day. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, because it is very high in sugar, but it, it, but it is better than eating some of the other things because you do have the vitamins and minerals. Right. Now, I wanted to know how many people actually, just kind of get an idea of how many people actually had a serving of fruit each day. So I asked mm -hmm. my, my Twitter followers right. and my Facebook followers how many of them actually had fruit each day. Mm -hmm. And actually the overwhelming majority of, of those who, who responded said they do have fruit on a daily basis. And some others say they have vegetables, of course, on a daily basis mm -hmm. as well. But I'm inclined to mention an article that I read in the Huffington Post that talked about health and wellness. And it said that because of the economy, Mm -hmm. We find more people veering away from proper health and wellness. And the article specifically was talking about a family who can only afford to go to McDonald's and purchase off of the dollar menu. Mm -hmm. And so the child is so inclined now that he has a little jingle that talks about the dollar menu when he goes to McDonald's. Mm -hmm. So do you see that as a problem? Oh, definitely. Um, uh as the economy goes, people may not want to eat, you know, because it is expensive. Right. It's expensive to eat organically. Mm -hmm. It is expensive to eat fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, these things are, are expensive. And so as the economy goes, people don't have as much money. It is easier to go in there and get these things, the dollar menus mm -hmm. and things like that. But um, as a society, we have to at some point say, you know what, we're not going to eat this. Right. We have to get our fruits and vegetables in um, because it, you're saving yourself now, but when you come into the pharmacy, you know, 20 years from now, mm -hmm. and you have to take five prescription medicines. Oh, even, yeah. if, even if you're on, even if you have insurance and your copay is $20, mm -hmm. that's $100 a month. That's still a lot of money, right. That's $100 right. a month. And so we have to take some of that personal responsibility. Um, but it, it's not just that. It's a systematic type of thing. There are certain uh, um, grocery stores in certain neighborhoods that mm -hmm. have no fruits and vegetables. Right. And if you don't have a car, you know, how are you going to get to, exactly. you know, a certain other area of the city to get your fruits right. and vegetables? So there are a lot of social issues that a lot are involved of with us. Now I'm in so what's your personal uh, opinion on the uh, quick fixes, I call them, that are out there? Your uh, monster energy drinks, which right. you know, I'm, a, I'm a fan of, actually. <laughs> right, um, right. Your um, five-hour energy, your mm -hmm. Red Bull. Mm -hmm. uh, I know though there's a place for those, and I... I do believe they do work, right. but what's your personal opinion on those? I mean, most of them are packed with caffeine and sugar. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the, uh, of course, Monster is packed with caffeine and sugar. And of course, Red Bull is packed with caffeine and sugar. Your five hours don't have as much sugar, but they do have a lot of caffeine mm -hmm. in it. These are all stimulants. They're going, to, they're going to get you through that day, but oftentimes people crash after that. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes people have a very jittery feeling during that. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, that's why I typically try to tell people to stay away from those. And let's try to get to the root of what's going right. on. Um, if I can share a quick story with you, one of my aunts, you know, she was taking a stress balance and energy. And I said, is it working for you? She said, you know what, Brian, at first I didn't think it was. Mm -hmm. But, you know, your uncle one day asked me, what was I doing? And I was like, I'm ironing your clothes for work. Mm -hmm. And he said, you hadn't done that in six months. <laughs> so she didn't even realize she had this so extra it energy. Was it was working. She didn't even realize because it didn't give her that jittery feeling that she felt with some of the other yeah. products. It just gave her stuff that natural energy to get up and do what you want to do. Right. So if you're trying to lose weight, 
eat, drinking these Monster Energy drinks and these Red Bulls throughout the day, you know, really aren't going to do it. Right. Um, I wrote a little article about how, you know, just switching water can really help save calories. Mm -hmm. And if you, you know, drink two, two Red Bulls or Monster throughout the day and you just replace those with water, you can save yourself 500 calories a day. Oh, wow. You know, just That's by, you know, and so if you can get other ways to get you that energy, mm -hmm. that, that'll be best for everything, for weight loss, diabetes, mm -hmm. everything. So what natural supplements are there out there? Let's talk about um, high cholesterol, mm -hmm. um, which is um, high in some um, ethnicities. Mm -hmm. What are some supplements? I've heard of um, red yeast rice mm -hmm. and some things of that nature. Mm -hmm. What would be your recommendation for someone who... Um, has hypercholesterolemia um, but doesn't want to necessarily get on a prescription medication? Um, well, a couple of things. One, uh, fish oil is my favorite supplement. Mm -hmm. I tell everybody if there's one supplement you should take, it should be fish oil. Mm -hmm. um, it does, it's good for everything from right. cholesterol to diabetes, the blood pressure, the sexual health. Mm -hmm. um, we've gotten people to drop their triglycerides, you know, in half by just being on fish oil. Mm -hmm. um, triglycerides are, are a huge problem for people who have diabetes. Mm -hmm. It also affects total cholesterol. Um, but it, all fish oil isn't the same. You need to get one that's pharmaceutical grade, mm -hmm. one that's ultra purified because so many fish oils are polluted mm -hmm. and you need to get one that's fresh caught. Uh, the red yeast rice is a great natural alternative. Um, red yeast rice is the natural version of the statins, these Lipitor and Zofor. Right. That's the natural version. Mm -hmm. So that's another good option. And then niacin. Mm -hmm. Niacin is a great, niacin is vitamin B3. Mm -hmm. And if you take enough of it, it's very good at reducing your good cholesterol, I mean, at reducing your bad cholesterol and raising your good cholesterol. Okay. But it's very important you go to somebody who's knowledgeable right. because niacin can also affect blood sugars as well. Mm -hmm. So for a person who's diabetic, I don't reckon to recommend niacin at first, right. you know, different things like that. But the first thing I would always start with is fish oil, a good quality fish oil. But you oil. know, um, I began taking fish oil because I mm -hmm. do work out um, mm -hmm. fairly regularly mm -hmm. and it was recommended that I do fish oil. Also, glutamine, is mm -hmm. that a form of omega-3 as well? Glutamine? Um, no, glutamine is actually an amino acid mm -hmm. that um, helps uh, the lining of our set. I mean, I don't know if you're talking about glucosamine, um, but uh, glutamine is not a form of fish oil. Mm -hmm. Glutamine really does help uh, build up your uh, intestinal tract and things like that. Okay. A lot of times I do recommend glutamine for a lot of people, mm -hmm. um, especially anybody having any type of digestive issues. Right. Uh, fish oil is great because it's a natural anti-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. How many fish oils do you take a day? One. Okay, see, that's the problem. Most people do not take enough fish oil. Mm -hmm. Most people need to be on at least four or five fish oil a day. Okay. Um, if you look at the Eskimos, mm -hmm. um, the Eskimos, they did a study and they looked at these women who were Eskimos. This, these women smoke, mm -hmm. they do little to no exercise, and 50% of their diet comes from fat. Oh, wow. But it's good fat because it's from cold water fish. Okay. And their heart disease is 75% less than what we have. Okay. The amount of fish that they eat a day is equal to eight fish oil tablets a day. Oh, wow. So most people don't take enough fish oil. Mm -hmm. And I tell people everybody needs to be at least four or five of the thousand milligram capsules. And you really will see you won't be stiff in the morning. Mm -hmm. You know, your bowel habits will be more regular. Mm -hmm. Cholesterol, blood pressure, and everything goes down. Most people don't take enough so fish oil. So it just oil. helps out with a lot of different things. If you're going to take one thing. That's what you need to take. <laughs> that's what you need to take. Wow, some good information. Listen. I think I need to come down and check you guys out. Definitely, definitely. Especially for the sleep aids or the... the, the stress balance. Yeah, the energy. stress balance. I need all of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Listen, viewers, we appreciate you joining us on today, too. If you want to learn more information about what we've just talked about, visit OneWellnessPlace.com. Listen, also, for you Facebookers and you Twitterers, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. There's some wonderful information that I'm posting on a daily basis. Also, visit my webpage, PerspectivesTV.com. Again, I'm Dr. Ronjik Williamson. You've been watching Perspectives, where you're not only informed, but inspired. Catch us next week.